So I'm going to demonstrate really quick uh, how to create a configlet or CLI configlet in um, in Juno Space. Um, there is a lot of power that you actually have with configlets, uh, and I kind of wanted to show how you could take just kind of standard um, uh, configuration template type uh, environments and utilize that to uh, deploy consistent configurations out to your devices. So uh, for this example, I have created a, a configlet called Spoke VPN Setup. Um, and if we uh, we look at this um, this configlet, so this configlet's uh, job is to create a um, an IPsec configuration. And yes, a security uh, director can create IPsec connection for you, but uh, in this particular instance, um, we uh, wanted to turn up BGP, have a unique uh, peer AS per peer, and currently secure security director cannot do that. So um, so since we have configlets here, let's uh, utilize configlets to. Uh, create a templized configuration for us. So this will uh, this is only applied to one device where security director can actually do both sides and make a match. Um, this you'd have to actually kind of deploy twice. So if we look at this, um, there's a a bunch of different stuff in here, but ultimately all we're doing is we're outputting curly bracketed Juno's uh, configuration. Um, anything with a dollar sign is a variable name. Uh, so I've created a bunch of variable names in here such as uh, you know remote peer AS, site name, uh, re remote internal IP address. Um, you'll see some additional ones down here, such as Ike uh, gateway name. Um, for the most part, this is pretty simple. We're just doing some replacement. Um, this get zero, uh, because uh, these are selection inputs, and I'll show you the selection inputs here in a second, this get zero just tells us, let's get the first element of that selection, el uh, um, uh, selection uh, variable. So, um, but other than that, uh, the rest of it is just regular Juno's config. You would uh, you can come in here and modify the values that you want, um, and uh, put anything else that you you would like in here. Uh, for example, if I want to make my interval um, a variable, I could put you know um, put interval in here, uh, and it would show up on the variable page, uh, which I'll show you next. Uh, for now, we'll just leave that at ten. Um, I am applying these to um, to SRX based devices, um, and uh, for the most part, the rest of the stuff we can kind of leave alone. Um, up at the top, if you noticed earlier, I am doing uh, a little bit of munging so that I can get um, uh, utilize some values and uh, uh, munging some text to, to get the right output. Pretty much I'm taking a variable called site name and I'm converting it to uppercase and also removing all the spaces and uh, replacing those spaces with underscores uh, since Juno doesn't like spaces for its element names. So I have a site element name now, which then I append with either IKE dash or IPsec dash um, in, in different parts of the configuration. So I have a IKE gateway name and an IPsec VPN name, um, and I use that for the, the gateway name and uh, also the VPN name. So um, pretty simple uh, pretty simple to define. Uh, takes a little getting used to. Um, this is a standard um, uh, configuration uh, template language um, uh, from Apache. I can't remember the exact name of it, um, but it, uh, all the documentation's out there. So it's, uh, it is pretty powerful in what you can do here. Um, you can add a lot of logic in here, well, loops, uh, ifs, you know, if statements, uh, test statements, etc. Um, if you want to get a lot more co um, complex, but this is kind of more of a simple example. So, uh, if I was creating this brand new, anywhere I have a dollar sign and I click next, they would show up here on this next page um, automatically. So I've gone in here and edited each one of these, but these are our parameters that are passed into the script. Each one of these parameters has a name. So this is what uh, we saw on the last slide, the dollar sign site dash name. This is the, that parameter name. We have a display name that's you know friendly to the, to the folk actually um, deploying this uh, configlet. Uh, a description, uh, again, for the, the, the people who are activating the configlet uh, to get um, an idea of what these uh, variables are supposed to be. Um, you'll notice those three that I used up at top, uh, I made them invisible fields uh, so they don't view. The other options are text field which I can do a regular expression match on to make sure that I'm getting what I want. Uh, for example, this, this site name I'm saying, it's just gotta exist. Um, it's gotta be one, uh, one or more of any character. So I don't, I don't care beyond that. Um, that will probably bite me in the future. Um, this will probably be tightened down. So it's uh, you know just uh, numbers and uh, spaces and letters, but uh, right now I'm just saying any character is fine. Uh, here I'm taking ST0 with any digit after that. Um, if it doesn't match this, um, then we will deny. I also set uh, some default values in some of these. So if you got something that's most common for most of it, but you want to have an option, uh, you can set default values so that um, um, you don't have to retype everything. 
Um, these text fields down here, this is just a regular expression matching for an IP address. So I want to make sure it's a IPv4 IP address. Um, so those are in there. The other option that we have for as far as parameter type is a selection field. A selection field is pretty much a drop down menu where you can select from the different elements. Um, in these uh, selection fields, so let's actually edit the IKE policy name. We're actually running an XPath. Um, and uh, XPath is something that is scary and ugly, but uh, once you learn it, it's not too bad. Pretty much we're taking the XML ele elements of device configuration, security, IKE, policy name, and taking that text and presenting it to the user as, um, uh, as a selection. So really, at, at its heart, this is the uh, Juno's configuration hierarchy uh, for, for a policy name. We're taking the actual name and allowing it to be a drop-down uh, uh, list. So this means that we're dynamically pulling values out of the router and using them for drop-down menus. And so this means it's also unique to the device that's being deployed on, which is very cool. Um, other than that, uh, there's an order. So this is the order that's displayed to the user. Um, I, I incremented mine by five just in case I wanted to add something, and uh, sure enough, I did. Um, so here's something I wanted to add right after 20. It was easier than uh, rechanging all the numbers. So that, that defines the configlet. Um, so I haven't changed anything, so it's yelling at me at that, so we'll hit cancel. So to apply the configlet, uh, we can either come in here and actually uh, right click and do apply configlet. We'll get a list of the devices that match. Um, for this, it's uh, all my um, you know, lab uh, Firefly boxes. So we can collect, uh, select here and we'll see all of our parameters down here below. Um, the other way that we can actually deploy a configlet is go into our device management, find our device, uh, if we can uh, right click on it, uh, and there's also apply CLI configlet. If we go in here, it's a little bit different. Here, we, uh, we already have the device that we know, so we just click on the, um, the configlet name. And um, these, uh, the name and the category are completely customized to whatever you want, and we get the same values below. So let's, uh, let's fill these out and see what happens. So my site name, I'm gonna call it San Diego. Uh, like I said before, these are actually, I've, I've only got one IKE policy and one IPsec policy, but this is actually pulling it directly uh, from the router. Um, so if I had multiple ones, this would be a drop-down menu. So we'll select uh, all lab routers. Um, we we'll scroll our way down, uh, local VPN in interface. Uh, for this one, you, th this was a text input um, that uh, required me to put an ST0 interface in there. So if I do SD1, uh, it won't like that. So let's do ST0.1. Uh, local uh, external interface and interface unit. These are max pulling live from the router as well. So let's do gig 000, unit 0. Um, and let's give it a couple IP addresses, so our external IP address, let's do for that 11111. And for our internal IP address, this is the one we're going to utilize BGP, turn up a, a BGP peer on, is 10111. Um, and finally, we need a remote peer AS, so let's do 65001. At this point, we can hit validate. Uh, what this does is it, it really loads the configuration out on the router, uh, does a config check. Um, and uh, comes back and says everything's good. If we click next, uh, we get a list of everything that we punched in uh, to just double check everything's right, so that looks right. And we actually get a preview uh, of what was created. So we can actually see where each one of those variables has been replaced. We have description of San Diego now. Um, we put that one in quotes. Uh, PR, um, PRAS numbers. Um, we have that, uh, we expanded out where we, we took San Diego, made it all uppercase and put underscores in, uh, in it, and then prepended with IKE. We have that all lab router um, that came from a policy that we pulled directly from the router. Um, and uh, all the, the rest of the interfaces um, and everything else that we set up. So here we got a, a complete uh, IPsec uh, configuration. Um, again, it's only just one side. We can validate it again, uh, or we're gonna hit apply. If we hit apply, it's actually gonna go out and push that um, that configuration out. If we click on the job ID, um, we should get some uh, similar information. So um, in between that time, it was successful. So if we look at the results, um, it has all of the variables that we punched in. So this is good. If we need to go back and look at these uh, these values. Uh, it also has you know what configuration we pumped out. And if there was any errors, it would be listed below this. So all the information that's out there. And uh, we have applied that configlet. So, um, so you can easily start uh, temp uh, templatizing your configuration and um, you know, removing human error um, by, by having just uh, some defined fields. So those are uh, VPN, or uh, excuse me, CLI configlets.